Um, Mark here at Forge Cottage Art Studio. Um, hope you're all keeping well at home and uh, not being um, too bored and you're getting things done. Maybe you're doing some art. I know a lot of you are because uh, you send me a lot of your artwork either by email or sometimes you put it on the Facebook page, which is great. So it's really nice to see all that and to see that you're doing art. Um, today we're doing a, another piece of art with me and we're going to do something that perhaps both children and adults can do and it could be a challenge for both of you but I think it would be a really good one to do. Um, it's going to be, I'm not going to show you the picture yet because I, I like to sort of leave you waiting and seeing how it evolves as I do it. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, a lovely sky, a moonlit sky first of all. The moon's going to be about there and then we're going to bring the ground along and this lovely old tree with branches coming across and we're going to do, uh, before we do the tree, we'll do stars and all sorts. And uh, if you've got an old toothbrush, um, you may need that today because I'm going to show you how you can do, and a lot of the children in my art club use this anyway for certain effects, but you can speckle stuff with a toothbrush by, by pulling back on the bristles and spraying tiny little bits of paint all over your work, and that's going to look like thousands of stars in the distance. So that, we'll do that, a bit of that as well today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is paint the moon here. We're going to do a yellowy, creamy colour, but it would be better to paint it white first and then gradually graduate the paint going from a white colour, pale blue, and getting, gradually getting darker and darker and darker. Now if you saw um, a tutorial I did the other day, one where I, um, I was here with Evie, we did a, a cat on a tree and it's a similar technique to that where you have this coming wider and wider but this one's a little bit more technical. The tree's a little bit harder and there's lots of other things to do in the sky as well. So we'll, uh, we'll get started. As usual, the paints I have are the gouache paints, these ones. <clears throat> I went into the range the other day um, just to see if I could get some more and see if um, there was any, but there was, a, there was just a green and a black one there and that was all there was. So I know these paints are in short supply at the moment and also they're hard to get online at the moment because so many people are having a go at doing art at home at the moment. They you know, all these have sold out. But if you look around, I'm sure they will gradually start coming back into stock. So we'll be using this. This is acrylic colour as well. I'm going to be using that. Now, sometimes acrylic comes in tubes as well. So, you know, it doesn't have to be in a bottle like that. <clears throat> Another thing you could use instead of these is if you've got poster paints. They would work in a similar fashion to these because these are only a sort of a liquid, ready-mixed gouache. Some gouache paints are in tubes, um, which are a lot stronger. Um, but there's, there's these to use, and we can also use pastels as well, soft chalky pastels we'll use towards the end. But for now we're going to start painting with a strong acrylic colour, so get some acrylic. If you haven't got any acrylic at all, just use your white gouache, it'll be fine, honestly, so don't worry too much. Also, I've got varying shades of blue here, which we'll be using later. I've got these sort of blues. Now, it doesn't matter if you haven't got all these different blues. And I'm not, I've never been that concerned if all your shades aren't exactly the same as mine. As long as you're using similar shades and you're using the same techniques as I am, then, you're, then you should progress and learn a bit. So um, first of all, I'm gonna squirt out a little bit of white acrylic onto the plate, about that much. And take a flat brush, about that size, not too big, um, because I want to position my moon. I will go over the moon later with the yellows, but I want to, go progressively bluer and darker and darker and darker until we get round this side and we're almost like a blacky blue. Okay, so it really looks like an, a, a moonlit sky. And then we can do our yellows. If you do your yellows too soon, you might touch on the blues and obviously blue and yellow makes green. So we've got to be careful of that. So here we go, there's a little bit of water going onto my brush. I'll take some of the white acrylic and this is where you've got to make a decision about where your moon is going to be positioned. And I'm going to position my moon here. So above, middle and over to the right um, because I know that there's going to be a tree coming up through here. So I'm going to put it here. Um, if you're working on A3 paper, it's going to be the size of, how could you say, about that watch really. About a little bit, maybe a little bit bigger than that watch uh, face. So I'm going to position it about here, here, there, no here. Uh, <laughs> and about this size. I'm trying to paint in a nice circle, like that. Try and get it circular, if you can. 
Now with you, if you're working flat, you could turn your work over. And I think I'm going to turn my work over on this instance because it is hard for me to do that. Because I can't see where the line is because it's the other side of the brush. But as soon as I turn my work around, it's much easier for me to see it. And I can then just bring that round and finish that circle off much easier and neater. But of course, remember to put your work back where it was, otherwise your moon would be too coming in the wrong corner. So there we go. Back in the right position. Now this won't stay this colour. I'm using white because my paper's off white and I've used white so that when I put my yellow on it will be a brighter, lightest place in the whole picture. When you look at a moonlit sky, that, that moon when it's full is really bright, isn't it? It's quite bright. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Next thing, I'm going to start doing all the power blues and coming away from that. So the next job is to take some blues. Now I've got this greenish blue, it's a sort of an aqua blue. It's not quite a turquoise, it's slightly turquoise. Then another blue. Now don't worry if you haven't got all these blues, it really, really doesn't matter. You might only have that one, which is fine, it really is. But I'm doing a few more blues because I want my picture to um, have a few other elements in it. But don't worry if you haven't got that. And there's an acrylic blue going on the plate there as well. And later on, I'm going to use some black. Now that's acrylic black there. And move that out of the way for you. And I'm going to also use a little bit of gouache black as well. I'm going to put it next to that. Now on the plate, you, on the film, you probably can't see the difference between that and that. This is much more thicker and denser in colour and this is not so dense. So when that, if I painted a line of that, it would come out like a dark grey and that would be very dark. So that's the difference. But it's always handy to have that lighter black. Sounds funny, doesn't it, saying a lighter black, but it is a lighter black than that one. Um, so let's start mixing. So we've got the white here. I'm going to add some more to it. There's a few dry bits of blue there that fell off that bottle. I'm going to move those out of the way. Pick up the white acrylic and put it there. I'm going to start to add a tiny bit of blue. You don't really want to do too much at a time because you want it to be a gradual change. A little bit more going on. Just dab that down a bit there just in case it was too much. And a little bit of that one. If, as I say, if you've only got the one blue, it really doesn't matter. Okay, let's start putting some blues on. So, this is my first blue. It's coming around the circle, like that. Try and avoid going on the circle too much if you can, because you want it to be yellowy later and quite bright. So, you don't want it to go slightly darker because of the blue. Now, just start to go around, like that. Okay, now I'm going to make that colour slightly darker again, so more blue. Go a little bit more heavy handy with it this time, but not too much because obviously you want it to gradually change. You don't want to be too dark then, go light again there. You want it to be a gradual from light to dark. More blue going in, and a little bit of that one. Now I'm going to put some water on my brush and just mix it with that to keep it all nice and fluid so it flows off the brush nicely. And here's my next colour going on. Now when I do this, I'm going to start against the edge of it and then go over the other one a little bit, but without going over the white. There we are, already on there. Next colour, darker again. More blue going in this time. And you can go quite strong now because obviously we're getting further out. Around here, like that, about two centimetres thick. I mean the band, how wide it is, and then start to go back over what you did a little bit. So as it's run off the brush, and you get these lovely lines forming, these little swirls forming away from the moon glow, like that. And it looks nice doing that. Now a little bit darker, so again, mixing up more blue into the colour. Another drop of water on my brush, mix it in, turn it around, make sure all the white's come out the edge of the brush there, and I go again, here we go. Quite round, all the way. Go over what you've done a little bit. Fill that in. Like that. Now darker again. 
again. More blue. And gradually, what's happening, notice I've not added any white since the beginning. So the white is becoming less and less and the blue is becoming more and more. So it's getting darker and darker. There we go, there's the next one. And the, 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 the circles are getting bigger, so you have to sort of load up again before you get fully round on these bigger circles. And then back over a little bit what you did. you get to the edge that's fine you can keep going hopefully you've got something on your table protecting your table when you come to do it if you are doing it right now with me hopefully you have or if it's only a bit of a kitchen worktop or something like that you can just wipe it off afterwards there we go so we're getting that lovely gradual sort of blend there more blue this time I'm going into my acrylic blue but if you're not if you haven't got acrylic blue just put more of the uh, blue in this just gives me a bit more strength, um, quicker, there we go, darker again, and then in a minute we'll start adding some black, so I just need a drop of water with that as well because it was a bit sticky, and there we go again, all the way around, like that, and you find as soon as you put your brush in water, it really makes it nice and juicy again, and it starts to really let the paint flow. If your paint is sticky, you can't get that flow. It just keeps stopping, you get all these gaps. So you just put the, paint, uh, the paintbrush in your water and it, and it really like lets it slip about again. And it really does cover your page well, that's nice. So we're getting that lovely glow forming away from the moon there. Again, we need to make a darker color again, some more blue. And this time I'm gonna add some gouache black. All right, just a little bit. And there we go, that's gone in. And do you know what? If you've got purple, I was thinking about adding some purple. I'm not going to do it actually. No, just stick with the black, that's fine. I was thinking of maybe put going purpley, but it might not work with that blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, another dark colour going on. There we are, a little bit darker. Now, I couldn't get that any darker without the help of the black this time. I just had to use the black. It would have it wouldn't, it wouldn't just carried on at the same tone or colour. Um, without the black, so that's really helped it now. Go all the way around, and then go over a little bit of what you've done. Like that. And let it fade gently in. Okay. Now we've got to do a darker one. Now what we don't want to do, we don't want to be so dark over here that we can't see the tree, because we want the tree to silhouette against the the, the sky, so we mustn't go too dark there, otherwise you won't see the tree. So we've got to keep it fairly um, light, but dark at the same time, that we know that the, when the tree goes on, that'll be done with black and brown, so we, we need that to show up. We've got to make sure that shows up, so don't go too dark over there. So I've just added a bit more blue, a little bit more black went in, and just a fraction darker than that. And here we go, uh, well actually it's not at all, so I'll add a bit more black and more blue again. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, that's darker. And let that blend in all the way around. Drop the water on my brush to keep it fluid. And then it comes around there. That's gone light there. Do you see that? Because I added some water, it's gone light. So I'm just gonna add a bit more blue and black again. And just touch that in again up there. Bring that round. Let it flow over what you've done before. Uh, and if you find that it's not really blending, because it's got a bit sticky, just use a, um, your brush with a drop of water and no paint. And then you can just let that just slide over what you've done and it will bring the paint back to life a little bit and help it blend into the colour you did before. So you get that smoothness of change of colour. And there we are, so that's that. I'm just going over any tiny little gaps that were there. Sometimes you just have to wiggle it, don't you? you have to sort of wiggle away the gap. There we go, so that's nice. I'm pleased with that so far. Next thing, 
darker steel, but not too much darker. So go ash black. I haven't used any acrylic black at all yet. Going onto my plate, a little bit of acrylic blue and water. And I think that's darker. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a bit darker. And that's as dark as I'm going to go there because I want that tree to show up. And remember, these paints, they do lighten up a little bit as they dry. So I'm not going to go any darker. Just, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep with that colour till I get to about there, and then I'm going to go darker. Oh, because I know then I would have got past the edge of the tree, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. So again, I'm just going to put a bit more on that. It's pretty much the same colour, I didn't really do anything. I just made any, a little bit more of it. That's going round. Blend over what you did previously, touching any little areas which are allowing the paper to show through, like that. And now that corner there is going to be the same colour as there, as if we went all the way round, like that. Let that blend in. I might go a little bit darker in that corner by adding a little bit more blue and black in that corner. There we go, so that's looking all right, I'm pleased with that. And now, a um, drop of water on my brush there, and then I'm going to stick with this colour. So I'm going to stick with this colour for a bit longer, a bit more blue going in, just to make more of it really, it's the same colour. And then I'm going to carry on coming out here a bit further, going over what I did as well a little bit. Now, the tree is going to be positioned about where I am now. And I know my tree is going to show up. We're going to put highlights on the tree as well, so it will help it show up more uh, from, the, from the glow of that. It will really um, inject light into our picture, because that would be projected onto other things. And the only other thing in our picture is the, is the tree. So that will be getting quite a bit of highlight down the edge. Now the tree's going to be about there, there'll be land coming down there. So now I can start to go a touch darker now, so I want this side of the tree to be really dark. So I'm now going to add black gouache, more blue gouache, and if you've got any blue acrylic, add some of that as well. If not, don't worry. Let's see how dark we are now. now that's definitely darker than what we did just have, so that's good. Like that. All the way around that curve. Let that blend in. And I'm going to go even darker there. So more black. I'm going to use a little, little bit of acrylic black and acrylic blue. But just use more gouache black and blue if you haven't got that with less water. Okay? So just use gouache black and blue with less water. Here we go. So now we're really dark. And I'm just going to let that blend a bit. on my brush, squeeze that water so there's not too much, so I'm just a little bit wet, and then that can just blend through there like that. And see it's come off a little bit there, so all I do is just touch it in a little bit more, there like that. Sometimes you have to scrub a little bit to get it into the paper and then you can flow it in. There we are, so there's our kind of background colour. That dark colour that I use there, I might just put a little bit more in that corner there and a little bit more in that corner too. Now there's quite a lot of paint on there and it's pretty wet. It's rippled up slightly but that's okay because it will go flat again. They always do. And I think what I'm going to do is dry it and then I'm going to start to put white acrylic glows of stars which will also put yellow in and then we'll do some sparkles coming away from them. Some of the stars will be so small that they're just dots of white, and other stars will be so small that they're just toothpaste spray, and that's it. So we're gonna have three different um, sizes of star. It reminds me of slightly, um, if you've ever seen Van Gogh's Starry Night picture, 
It's a bit like that, but we're just focusing on one element. It's just the tree and that sky, because it's got that swirliness. And the stars are done, if you've ever seen that painting by Van Gogh, the stars are done, are going to be done in the same way that Van Gogh does his. Um, so we'll do that. Um, but first of all, let's dry it. So I've got to get the hair dryer out. So bear with me while I make a bit of a noise. Be careful with doing this, don't hold it too close. Just gently dry it off. It does light up if you do it. I always have a hair dryer in the studio, I'm in a drying station, just over there, where people get up and dry bits off as they're doing their paintings. It enables you to move on to the next stage quicker rather than having to wait for it to dry first. The reason why I want to get it really dry is because I want to put a little bit of pastel on it. Um, pastel, so pastel can only go on colours that are, are, are completely dry, bone dry. Right, that's dry enough. Now, the reason why I want to put pastel on is because I want to create a few more of these lines further into this bit and I'm just going to rub those in. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to get some blue pastels. These are chalk pastels. Um, and I'm hoping you've got some pastels or chalks. If you haven't got any at all, you can uh, you don't have to do this bit. Just don't worry about it, it's fine. It doesn't have to be done. It's just I want to. <laughs> right, so this blue here is a good match for that one. So I'm just going to bring that round. Like that, and put these lines around that like you create these sort of swirls, which look really nice. And they add a bit more character to the painting. Now, I don't want to go too far into this darker area with this pastel because otherwise it will be too light for it. So I've got this other one here, which is a darker blue. I'm hoping it's not too dark. Well, that is too dark, so I need to get a different one. Hold on. Um, I'm going to use find one. This would be a good one. This colour here. So I'm going to put a little bit of this one round. It's only a little bit, but and that can go around there. Very Van Gogh looking actually. The more I do this, I realise it's actually pretty Van Gogh looking. Round there as well. And then we get that nice, it just softens everything. It just makes it look really nice. But as I say, if you haven't got these pastels, don't worry, because it will still look good without it. If you have, use them if you can. Like that. And now I'm going to start to use a darker blue, the one I thought I was right for there, but it's not. So I'm going to use that there. Like that. And let it just go over there a little bit. Now what I'm going to do next is gently rub this round with my thumb, not a finger, a thumb, because I want it to be a big pad that I use, okay? And it's just going to go around like this. And remember, that must be bone dry before you do any of this, otherwise it will really um, start to start looking patchy, because the, the pastel won't glide over with your thumb anywhere areas which are damp. So it must be very, very dry at this stage. And just use your thumb as a pad, and let it just rub in, Bring that around like that, it just softens it again. You've still got the colour differentiation as it comes away, but it just gives it a nice feel, a nice look, like that. Always going in that arc, don't start going any old where, you're trying to create this curved arc, like that. Okay, there we are. Now the next job is to um, spray this with the toothbrush and this is our furthest away stars and this has got to be done next. No point in trying to do that after we put the tree in because you'll end up speckling the tree and it'll look like the tiny stars on the tree. So we'll try and make it look like it's behind. 
The thing I have to get right now is my toothbrush. And anybody who comes to Art Club knows, my Art Club, Forge Cottage, knows that we have a green toothbrush. There's the famous green toothbrush, okay? This was never used as a toothbrush, all right? <laughs> it's never been used as a toothbrush. It's only ever been for painting. Um, and it's got very firm bristles. It's the uh, hard bristle type toothbrush. And it does amazing effects. And if, if you've got an old toothbrush, use it. Now the next stage, watch this, what I do. Okay, let's just put my brushing water over there, move these out of the way. I've got another plate here. And I've got, there's my dirty blue water. I'll put that there. Here's my clean, fresh water. Now I'm just gonna dip into that with my toothbrush. And tap out some of the water onto the plate. A couple of times like that. Then, you see all that white acrylic I've got left there? I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna roll it around in that water like that, until I get something which I guess is about as thick as a uh, single cream, like that, and just push it in, then you might want to get some toilet paper or if you've got some uh, kitchen roll or something like that, just take that and just clean the edge, and what I tend to do is I hold the tissue right on the end of the brush, like that. Just grip it on there like that. And what that will do is stop any big drips coming out. Remember, you're working flat. So as you do that and spray with the brush, big drips could roll out there and go onto your um, page. I'm going to flip it around. So do you start videoing yourself? <laughs> I turned it around for some reason. How'd you do it then? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I have no idea what Ali's done here. I don't know how you flip You'll have to start videoing like that as best you can. Hang on a minute. It don't, it don't, there's, no, there's no button on there, is there? Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Did you start videoing your own face? Yes. Oh, God. I've got my bunny ears oh, right, in. We'll, we'll edit that out before it goes on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, just push it into the white, put that on the end. Because you're working flat, you might get drips come out of there. <clears throat> um, I'm not working flat, so the only drips that will come out will end up on the floor. So I'm still going to do it to show you anyway. Now I'm going to start spraying here. Now, not too much in that area, because that area is so lit by the glow of the moon, you're not really going to see the stars much in that glow, but you will start seeing them appear around here. Now, just gently spray. Oh look, there's a big one there. See that, just blocked out my toothbrush. I'll just wipe that away. And rub that in, gone. All right. See the stars. I don't know if zoomed in enough so you can see them. More, more. Big, few big cluster of big ones there. That looks all right. That's all right. I'm happy with that. It looks like a Milky Way or something. There, there, and there. A couple more there and there. That's it. Job done. Okay. So that's our furthest away stars. Now at this stage you've got to dry it again because you're going to be painting some bigger stars over the top and what could happen is um, you will lean on that and then it will get in a mess. So let's just dry this off. I'm amazed that one didn't run down because it's quite thick but I pulled it in time. Let's just dry it off. Like that. So they're not perfectly dry, maybe you could dry yours longer, but I'll, I'll move on. Next stage is to put in some faraway stars, um, and we're going to use the end of a paintbrush, one about that thick, not the actual brush end, the, the stick end of it, alright? But before, before I do that, I don't want my stars to be too white, or do I? No, they will be white, let's leave it as white, because we're going to dot some yellow on some of these as well. So I've just dotted that into my water. I'm just going to pick up 
on the acrylic white paint, like that, so you've got that on the end. Now I'm going to just select areas where I want to put them. And I just dot on like this. Now, when, I, when you're doing things like this, don't get into a pattern where you're trying to keep everything the same distance apart, because the sky isn't like that when you look at it at night, is it? The stars are all over the place. So, put them on, sometimes cluster a couple like that, and then dot them about. I'm keeping my finger down when I do that as well, so I don't push too hard. Get that couple over there, look. It really starts to look like a starry sky. There we go, back up there. Oh, big one there. You can see v I... Venus now in the sky. Yeah. It's, the, oh, yeah, it's yeah. the third most brightest thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Next job is we're going to use the other end of the brush this time and we're going to mix um, up a yellowy solution now which we can put over here and also make our yellowy stars, okay? So it's, again, white acrylic there. Put it into a clean area of your plate and we'll put some there. Don't need loads of it because, you know, these are only small stars. I'm going to take some yellow gouache I'm going to put a little blob at the side there, a small little blob, about the size of my little finger now. And then into my white, a bit of dry yellow there, I'm going to move that out of the way. And mix that in. Now it's not very yellow, alright, it's a very, very light yellow. Like that. A bit more maybe, that's it there. Like that. Now first things first, let's start to put the yellowy tinge to our moon. So we're just going to go from the centre and just start to swirl out that yellowy colour. It gives it some warmth. It goes really nice with the blue. And also outside in the glow area, that first light colour of the glow, we're going to put something in there. safe and keeping well within those areas of light. Now we're going to paint in some stars which are going to be quite big these ones so we're going to do, obviously it's a fantasy picture, it's not true to life but we're going to put one up there, that size, a couple down here. Don't rub it too much because remember we, if, you did the, if you did the pastel uh, you don't really want to you know, mess up the pastel too much because otherwise it will, it will change the colour of that and it will become a dirty bluey colour, so a greenish colour. So try not to pick up on the, I'm just mixing a bit more up for myself there, with the pale yellow. Yeah, try not to pick up too much on the, uh, on the pastel uh, shades that we did previous. Another one there, slightly smaller than this one. Right. So we've got three there. I'm going to put another one here. Try these in a second and just give them another dab over so they look a bit nicer because the blue is coming through. So I think these bigger ones will need two coats before we do the next effect to them. Like that. Another one up here. So these are the biggest stars. Like that. Let's get that a bit rounder actually. And that will need another coat in a minute, that one. But that's not a problem. I'll dry it first and then it'll be okay. It will receive, it'll take the paint better next time around. So that's another one. Oh, I'm gonna do one more there. I think it needs another one there. A little bit of balance. So we'll put one in there. Like that. Now it's time to dry again. So just bear with me while I just dry these off. a bit drier, they have to be bone dry, so they're a bit drier, so they take the next uh, coat of paint. Um, they will take another coat of paint, but they're only a little bit drier. 
By the way, all the people that are doing the Turner Portfolio Competition in Margate, um, Ali will be sending an email out soon, but I know that the, um, the date of entry has been extended to the 31st of May. So don't worry, there's no panic yet to get them in, um, obviously because of the coronavirus stay at home lockdown, it's been extended. So we've got plenty of time to get those in. shapes over them to make them look like they're really twinkling in the moonlit sky, in the night sky. So put it in the glass first. So that one holds a beautiful point, look, and it's wet, really nice point. But a brush like that can do a very thick line. I'll do it at the side, look, if I load it up to paint. It can do a thick line, look, like that. Or it can do a very thin line, like that. Okay, it's all about pressure, isn't it? So however hard you push the brush is going to determine how how wide your line is. Now we need to do a very, very thin line on this now. And the way I do it is by holding the finger down against the board or the table as I paint like that. And that only allows the paintbrush a certain amount of touch, okay? So you can use it as a little grader. So I can get it to the point where I can lower the paintbrush down and then it's only able to do a very thin line and the way we're going to do this, we'll try and make these look like this, they're twinkling. So I'll show you on this one first. We're going to do a line that comes up and always work from the centre of the star. You're using pure white with a little bit of water in it so it flows off the brush. And you're just going to work from the centre and lift off as you come all, as you finish your line. We're going to do another one coming out here. And lift off. Another one coming out this way. So we're doing one o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. All right, so they're the positions of those lines, like that. They're, just going to go like that. they're the longest ones. Okay, like that. Next, we're going to bring some out in between. So we're going to bring one out at, say, between one and two, sort of thing, like this. From the centre and lift, but I'm not, I've not gone so long on that one. So again, on that one there, and that one, and that one. That one came out a bit thick, I'm going to wipe that one away. I didn't like it. And redo it. Like that. Okay, so we've got this sort of lovely starry shape. Now, another way you can do it you're worried about doing that with a brush because of the uh, the because uh, you need that ability to be able to hold it lightly it's fiddly but another way of doing it is finding a chalk a new chalk like that which has got a very sharp edge still left on it 
like that. And then you could use that. And I'll show you on this one. Up and lift off. Down, lift off. To the side, lift off. Like that. And then like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Now that was easier, wasn't it? That was definitely easier. So you might want to do all yours like that. Now because I want to get through this quicker, I'm going to do all mine like that actually. But if I was doing it as a painting that I was sitting here on my own doing it, I'd probably do it as a, as a painted line. But I can show you in, in the pastel, with the pastel. So I'm going to do that one. Like that, so it like twinkly. That one here. Keep turning that chalk so you end up, you've always got a crisp line. Sometimes I put a sheet of paper. If you're working, you can take a piece of uh, kitchen roll and lay it down on things that you've already done, and then you can lean on the kitchen roll, especially when you're using pastels like this, because then it stops you uh, being able to ruffle, you know, uh, dust away what you've done with your hand. So there they all are. Okay. Um, now, what I want to do also is a couple of lines. While I've got this white chalk, I'm going to do a couple of lighter lines coming down there. Well, which I'll put with the yellow. That yellow is dry now, of course. Like that. Just a little bit. Just to make that glow a bit bigger. And this time I'm going to use a clean finger, so I'm checking on the digits, and there's a clean one there, so I'm going to use that one. And I'm just going to let that push in. Rather than leave it chalky, I'll, leave it, I'll push it into the colours that are underneath. Right, so now we're all ready to put our tree in and the land. And the land is going to come up here. If things, if those stars are in the way of it, too bad. We paint where we want to paint and that's it. So even though we might have done a star, it doesn't matter if we block one out slightly. We're going to put our tree where it's got to go. And the way we're going to do our tree is like this. So we're going to use, I'm just going to wipe this plate off that I've used um, the toothbrush paper. And I'm wipe that off. ceramic plates because they're easy to wipe off and wash up and also drag colours into other colours. With those round things, with all the different potholes, they're difficult to mix colour and all that. But with this you can just put colours where you want and just bring other colours into other colours. Is that easy coming in? Um, you right, Evie? She's okay. on the phone. Hold on a second. Everything all right? So that was Evie, my daughter, our daughter, um, she's just come in <laughs> looking for Bo and her dog. She's outside. Hopefully she's, she's in the garden, Evie. She's in the house. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is the tree. So we're going to paint uh, black acrylic, water on your brush, black acrylic. There, one, two, three, well it's quite a bit really. Like that. Drop of water with it, get it in. Because I don't want it to be too stark, so I'm not going to actually add it directly into the black. I never do that, by the way. When you're mixing colours, don't add colours directly into other colours. Mix them, mix them from another area. So there's my brown. That's going into the acrylic black. And what that's doing is just taking the edge off the black. Right, there's going to be other colours going into this later to form highlights on the tree. But I just didn't want it to be too black. There we go. So it just takes the edge off. I could have used blue. Use brown on this occasion, and I'm, I've mixed up quite a bit of that because I need a lot of it. It's still going to look black to you, but it's not. It's like a very, very, very dark blacky brown. Now we're going to start putting the tree in. Now some of you might like to draw this first, and in fact I'll do that to help you, okay? Because I think it might need that. 
I'm going to use a blue chalk and I'm going to bring up some branch positions but I'm not going to paint, I'm not going to draw in the very thin sticks and, and all the ends of the branches because there's no point. I might as well just put those in with a paintbrush when I do it. Um, so I just position the tree area. So this is where my trunk's going to come up through here. All right, like that. So there's my. This is ground, like that. So this is up on a hill, isn't it? Or something. And the ground goes off through there, something like that. And then I'm going to bring this trunk up. It's an old tree. It's been there a long time. There's a branch going off over there somewhere, all gnarly and twisted. Another one coming up here. It's going to take a turn there, like that. It's going to go off somewhere over there. But yeah, I can draw those in just in, but I will be going over those with paint later. And we'll put some curly ones on them as well. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So it's a fantasy tree, isn't it? And curly like that, and that's where that's going. And then this is going to continue up. And then we're going to have a curly bit going off there. That's going to come up a bit more. Another branch going off up there. And then the tree splits off. I'm not expecting you to design your tree exactly the same as mine. Just keep it back from there a little bit so we've got some things coming across. We'll have branches going through there, like this. There's a branch coming through there. Remember, branches always get thinner the further they get away from the actual main trunk. back in where you were and then you can redraw it. So it's uh, very easy to correct any errors like this too. I like these curly bits that I'm doing here and there. It just gives it a bit of a fantasy feel like that. Now we've got to paint it in. So um, let's start painting it in. Um, we're going to use that colour we mixed just now. So it's the black and the, uh, the, black and the brown and water on your brush. Now the water is important not too much, otherwise the colour will come out too thin and you'll see the background colour through it. And not too thick um, that you can't move it around. So it's kind of like a double cream this time, not single cream like we had for the toothbrush. This is like double cream before you've whipped it. Okay? So here we go. Now, where's a good place to start on a tree? I would say this top and then we can work our way down. Uh, because then you're not going to be leaning in what you've just done, it's still wet, so it's best to start at the top. And here we go, so like that. Go over the line you did with the chalk. And if you've used a pencil, you can still go over that line too, so paint over the line. Now I like that there, but one thing I didn't do when I was drawing it, I just feel that we could do with another little branch coming out through there. Into your paint, into your water constantly, actually, just to keep that fluid. And that one goes off up there somewhere. Like that. And then you just got to keep going, basically. So that's going to come down there. Now I can paint quite quick because I've been doing it a long time. But of course, you can take as long as you like. Um, and if you're just watching this, and you're planning on doing it later, you can pause me, can't you? So you can watch me for a bit, pause me, etc. Now that brush has been wet a long time, it's starting to spread, it's starting to do that. All right, so it's time to change it. So that one's going to stay over there for a minute because it's not doing the job for me anymore. It will be all right, it's not, it's not damaged, it's just that it needs to uh, dry out again. 
because these bristles, this is only, they're only synthetic bristles, and they start to curl. So now I've gone with a bit of brush, and I'll put that again because this is doing the job for me. And I'll just use the tip of the brush to do those finer areas, and that can come right over the top there of the moon. And be careful where you're leaning because you don't want to leave black splodges. splits up here from that one, comes along. Look how nicely it flows, and there's only one reason why that's flowing like that. It's because it's just the right paint consistency. If you find it's not flowing off your brush like an inky pen, it's because your paint's too thick. If you find it's flowing really well, but it's not really covering, then your paint's too thin. So as I was saying, you've got to really get it to the right consistency. And for me, that's just about right. And I know I keep adding water, but that's alright because that's drying out. It's quite warm in here, that's drying out slowly. I'm adding that and doing that, then that's keeping that at a constant um, kind of uh, texture. So that's why you can keep adding water without the fear of it getting too runny. Don't pour it in, of course, it's only what's on the brush. Let's have a little twisty thing in. Smooth out your lumpy bits. Uh, I'll come around for that branch in a second. Let's do this bit up here. Right, join them to there. I don't want to spit them up over here, can I? And remember, don't have any of these finishing too thick and abrupt. When you do a branch coming out of the tree, it just stops suddenly and that's it. It looks like someone came along and chopped it off with a chainsaw. So you, you've always got to remember, if you are going to end a branch and it's still within the confines of the picture, these ones aren't, they're right like here somewhere. But when you've got ones up there, they have to end gradually to a nice slow finish. So it looks like a natural growth on the tree, rather than just being chopped off by somebody. That always looks better. might feel that if you go over the pastel it might end up making your branch look too thick whereas when that's been dried you can easily just rub it away so if you, if you have got bits like that don't worry. Um, now it's going to come up with this gnarly sort of branch coming along like that and there's another bit coming off over there with a curl on it. And I haven't got my finger down now, I'm just not breathing while I do it and just trying to keep the control. slightly when I get to the tip. And that's a good reason because if you don't lift off, quite a bit of pressure there. And then as I come down, no, I'll show you on this one, because there's gonna be another one coming out here. And as I come as I come down, slightly thicker there, and as I come down, I start to lift off. Down. I might leave a 
a few little gaps in it that it looks like highlights on the ground. We'll be doing some of the pastel anyway, but that's kind of working for me through there anyway. So I'll leave a few little gaps there. Look at this side of the one because I want it to look like it's the shadowy side. Because all that light is coming from this side of the tree, isn't it? Like that. Rub that in. And there we go. Now up here, I've got another branch there to put in. So that's going to come off the tree like this. And I'll be kind of twisted. that's quite hard to do so it can be done with a black uh, pencil so um, I've lost it hold on a minute I've got one over here there it is and I need to sharpen it because I am the only person that sharpens pencils in the art club <laughs> there's 150 60 people that come every week and I'm the only one who sharpens the pencils here and if there's a sharpen there, I'm just going to go over there for now. And we're looking for something fairly sharp. Not to get your shirt and paint over there. Right, that'll do. So now, with a sharpened black pencil, colouring pencil, or black colouring pencil, we can now start, I can see a few little uh, bits that haven't been fully dry, so I've got to be careful of them. And there's a couple of places where I'd like to put some thinner bits. So, we could just bring some little bits like this off. Some more detailed little swirly bits on the ends. Like this. Little, little nice little touches, which we would have found very difficult to do if we'd used a paintbrush. This gives us some nice little details. You can colour in little bits you might have missed even. Let's bring another swirly one off of that. And let it thicken up as it joins the main branches in. Alright, so don't just do little swirls which don't appear to be actually like they were growing from it. They need to sort of come out like that, swirl over, and as they come back towards that bit they get they thicken off so it looks like it's actually growing from that other one. Like that. Okay, and it just gives us the chance to put in those extra swirly bits which would have been very hard to do with the brush. Another one up there. Another one up there. Now over this side, they're not so apparent anyway because it's much darker. Do you remember how we wanted the tree to show up? If we was that dark there, 
that tree wouldn't have looked so good. It needed to stand out, so that was quite important in our picture. What I might do, I might just bring a few grasses up, like this, at the side of the tree. You always get grasses growing at the side of the tree, don't you like that? We can bring some grasses up, put them over that side, on this side, like that. And start at the bottom, just flip up as you come up, like this, and you can get these lovely grasses just growing. And they're also silhouetted because of the moon behind. Once we've got all that in and you're happy, we need to highlight some of these areas. Okay? And the way we're going to highlight them is by using a. I'm going to just touch that in again. You notice that? It's very dry up there. So I'm just going to touch that in with some of that original colour. Like that. I might as well show you these things because when you're doing stuff, you know, it doesn't all work out perfectly. At times when I'm and so I made loads of mistakes, and I'm sure I say this to the children that come to the art club and adults. There's no way on earth Van Gogh sat there painting or Rene Magritte or Picasso painting away, never making a mistake. They made lots, I know that for sure. And we know that because when you x ray a picture, you can see all the errors under the uh, painting. But yeah, they made lots of mistakes, so if you make one, you're no worse than those guys, okay? So just don't worry about it. What they were good at though was covering up errors, and that's really important. Once you get better at art, you'll be able to disguise things. You make a spot look like a bush or whatever. You just do whatever it takes. Or if you need to clean it, you know how to clean the paint away and then repaint over the top. But there's always ways of fixing errors. So don't ever think, oh, I've made a dreadful mess. I have to stay there and leave it. Don't ever think like that. Fix it if you need to. Um, now, the colour I'm going to use is blue and pale and a, and a sort of a purpley colour. Um, Let's see how we go. Now, if the light is coming from the left, the right hand side, here, it's going to be shining towards the tree this way, so we only really want to highlight areas on that side of anything. So anything that's facing that way gets a highlight. So I've got this light purpley colour. I'm not going to go too strong. We don't want the tree to look like it's changing colour. We want the tree to look like it's just got a little bit of light on it. So this is how we do it. So the underside, some of these branches up here, just going to get a little bit, because they're only thin, just wipe it in a little bit, just the odd little highlight. Up here, it's going to get a highlight on that side, and there, and there. Look at a very small amount, there's no dust pouring off of this because I'm barely pushing, it's just literally the weight of the pastel on there because I don't want it to be, become a mess and have the tree changing colour. It's a, it's a dark silhouetted tree, so it needs to remain that way. So there's a highlight there, some highlight on the ground. It's going to speckle that because of the, uh, the grasses over there. Another one there. A little bit on the back of that, just catching the light. Because it's facing that way, and it will make it look like it goes that way a bit before the light gets to it. Back there. Certainly nothing down this side of the tree. Now, I used this technique the other day on so I can't remember what it was, but I do that drag round. So you drag down, just drag it down, drag it round the tree. Remember the bits I said that I didn't paint over? They're quite easily removed just by using rubber. Make sure it's a clean one. Clean rubber, like that, and a razor, and then you just take it, and then you can just literally rub out those bits around the tree that you never covered over, like that. Just gently remove them. And the ones up there, I'm not, the, I'm not too concerned about because they look like highlights anyway, like I just did with the purple, and they can stay there. And there we have it. A little fantasy tree glowing in the moonlight, stars, wonderful isn't it? All these lovely little highlights and things like that. And this lovely glow, we really get a sense of light with a picture like this. 
It's almost like somebody shining a torch out of the painting. The only way you can ever get that is by making sure other stuff in the painting are very dark, okay? And it's like summertime pictures. The only way you can make a picture look like it's really sunny, you can go lighter and lighter and lighter, but that doesn't achieve anything. What you need is shadows. As soon as you start putting shadows in, you can see that there's strong sunlight. And it's the same the other way around. Okay, so this looks really, really light through here because everything else is, is dark and that's how you do uh, nighttime pictures as well. You just put little highlights on colours without showing their full colour. We know that tree isn't black, don't we? And you know it's not that colour as well, but it, because in the daytime when you look at it, it'll probably be a greyish brown colour. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm going to put it in the frame. I'll sign it first. I always sign just Mason when I do it in this corner because it's free. Like that. Mason. Alright, I've done it with black so it's highlighted, it's silhouetted against the lighter colour. Let's try the old frame thing. That's in the way actually, so we've got And put that there. And there we go. We've got this lovely picture. You can see what I mean about the Van Gogh element to it because of the swirly sky and these lovely shapes on the tree, sort of thing Van Gogh might have done. Um, really pleased with that. I hope you've enjoyed doing it, doing it, or if you're going to do it later, I hope you enjoy doing it later. Stay safe, everyone. I look forward to doing another one with you soon. Um, I'll let you know when that is. But for now, take care, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.